mechanism itself. So there is no need of uh, anybody to interfere in that and may, uh, make the car drive. So it is happening completely automatic. So for making the system to run automatic, you have to define everything point to point. If there is a curve, you need to enter that the steering rotate and take the curve. Okay. So have you seen those things in the real time? Yes. You have seen? So to some extent, uh, some places now in India also we are trying to do that. For that, the car itself is not enough. You should have the track board mechanism also should be proper. You should have a very clear, uh, clear way, path. Then uh, there is no problem. Like there should not be any hump or dip and all those things should not be there. Okay. So what the driver will do with the automatic car? Simply he will sit as a passenger and the car will take the uh, take it further, isn't it? So only you have to, you can see that uh, in India also you can see that uh, in some very high end cars I got to just uh, make it to drive more, the car will take it. But uh, if any complications come, you need to change it to the uh, manual mode. Have you seen all those things? So all this happens because of you have a very good uh, facility for the technological improvement has happened to that extent that you can uh, reduce the human involvement in mechanical movement. Okay. So then uh, or any so many other examples are there. Is that clear for you? You can just make a note of it. So what of the example also we see in the next slide? All of you make a note of that. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, can we move to further? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the next one? So, you can see that a simple actuation system, whatever things are there, the monitor is there, processing is there, actuation is there, environment is there. So, how the process takes place? So, let us uh, try this with a simple example. So what it will do, the remote user sends the command to the processor. So what you need to perform? What is your operation, what you have to perform? So the processor inspects the motor or the robotic arm and uh, sends the command according to the requirement of the user. For example, it will make sure that Okay, the uh, car is moving forward, so it has to take a deviation. So it will give the instruction. Okay, then uh, if you are, it has to slow, it has to stop, then uh, it will say that, okay, you have to slow down and you have to stop at this point. So all those uh, things will be taken care. Of. And uh, how this takes place? The processor is the primary responsible for converting the human comments into a sequential machine learning comments. That is very important. So we will be, we'll be giving the comments that has to be converted into a machine learning comment. Machine learning comments means what? What is machine learning comments? Yeah. So the machine should be able to understand what is your what is your comment. So it, uh, it has to be converted in such a way that. The machine should be able to understand or recognize the language and the sequences of operation what it has to carry out, which enables the robot to move further. Okay. Then what is there? Robotic arm finally moves the, the uh, means you can see here, once the instruction is given from the monitor, it is being processed and the, this is the robotic arm or you can say the motor which is going to drive. So the actuation is going to take place, the motor driven mechanism is going to take place here, whether to move forward, backward, right side, left side, stop, uh, move, whatever instructions you give, okay. 
then uh, that is being uh, taken care in the automation process. So what is there in session three? Industry, what will happen? So you have uh, seen many of the industries uh, in the life uh, board. You can see that all in this mechanical mode of operation. So if you want to stop the process of manufacturing, you need to be this new job. Starting the process of manufacturing, then it keeps on doing in a systematic way. Is that clear? So you can just uh, see this is one of the example of a simple actuation system wherein you have uh, this is the process of driving the entire unit. So the next one is So the next topic is actuator type So what are the different types of actuators available? So you might have seen There are seven classifications of actuators One is hydraulic Next one is then the third one is electrical, thermal or magnetic, then mechanical, soft, and shape memory polymers. So these are the different uh, classifications of actuators, or you can say that actuator type. So what is uh, hydraulic? Have you ever seen the hydraulic actuators? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's very much common. Construction. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Wherever you have, uh, you have to lift <coughs> very huge uh, equipment or many huge uh, many metals and all those things, you go for hydraulic lifting. So we will study all the seven in detail. So first one we will study is hydraulic. So have you ever seen the hydraulic uh, actuator type? Yes, yes, sir. 
Even in the, our college, when you go to the ground floor, that tenant you can see one uh, uh, one fifty box that is there, that is the old one. So that was a project, and it is uh, used the hydraulic lifting only. So what was the project for hydraulic lifting that we have used there? It is a hundred project. Why? Because there is you you see no railway railway tracks. So how you cross the railway track? You need to go out and cross the entire uh, thing and come to the next platform. But here, the, this hydraulic uh, way of lifting that how bridge is. The bridge when the train will move out, the bridge will come. Okay, and when it will sense that the train is coming, the bridge will get lifted up. So that was one of the project uh, which was funded for college. So we have built the model there. If you are going to know its ground floor, you can see that model there. Before there were tracks and all, now all those tracks are removed. Okay. So we will see that what is hydraulic actuators? So hydraulic actuators works on the principle of compression and decompression of Fluids. So it will uh, work on the principle of compression and decompression of fluids. Okay. So that is what uh, you can see uh, some of the students in the schools and all the they use this and all the uh, okay. So hydraulic actuators works on the principle of compression and decompression of fluids. The actuators uh, facilitate mechanical tasks such as lifting loads. Means heavy loads usually we use this, and the hydraulic power uh, derived from fluids and cylinders uh, or uh, fluid motors and all those things. So you might have seen that uh, some hydro vehicles and all. If you want to lift, you use uh, this kind of process. Then the mechanical motion applied uh, to the hydraulic actuators is converted to linear, rotary, or oscillatory motion. And you can say that incompatible properties of liquids uh, is used in the hydraulic actuators to to generate that force. So the process of compression and decompression process is taking place to generate that pressure power. You need to have that power now. So for that, uh, this process of liquids, uh, properties of liquids are used in order to generate that energy or power to lift those liquids. Then the hydraulic actuators are also considered as skip system. Means you can say that skip system by look there is a hydraulic actuator here which uh, has the facility to lift and uh, come back. Like I, have, I was saying, you no. Know, the bridge. You are using the hydraulic characters to lift it, and this will come back again. You are not uh, moving it again and again, this and all those things. So it is almost a skip process of system. The actuators are limited acceleration, restricted usage. You have seen how it works. It works very much slowly. That going to lift it fast, no. it's going to lift it slowly. Have you seen these things in the bigger, bigger bridges and all things, lifted and all those things? So all these uh, places you can use this hydraulic actuators. So what is the next one? Pneumatic. You, you have any idea about pneumatic actuators? No idea? Okay, you complete it, we will go on to the next one.
So the next one will be in that right? So pneumatic uh, actuators, what do you understand by pneumatic actuators? See here, actuators works on the principle of compression and decompression itself. But uh, here what you can see, these are used by vacuum or compressed air, highly pressure uh, to convert into either linear or rotary motion. Here you might have seen that air compression is used here. Here you have seen this. Versus I thought you have seen when they, when they are not putting the rain flow, they use the logistics and they remove the air now. You have seen that. Uh, so you need a uh, it says small pressure can stop the entire vehicle because you know that stopping a vehicle which is going at a speed of uh, 50, 60, or 100 is very difficult. So that much power is required. So it can going to generate that power. So pneumatic uh, actuators uses the valve control uh, of water pipes, and uh, this can be used for uh, controlling the See, water, you know, for uh, the pipes, so whichever you could. So, you can use uh, this kind of actuators to control the water flow. See, with this very uh, high speed flow of water, it's not like it's a stopper. So, you can use this kind of actuators. And uh, the actuators using uh, this pneumatic energy. Of operation are typically characterized that quick response for uh, starting and stopping signals. That's what I told you. Suddenly you want to stop. You can use uh, the pneumatic process of approach. Where uh, you might have seen in bigger vehicles and all, they uh, how the brake system goes. Suddenly the entire system stops there. So the small pressure changes can be used to generate large forces these uh, in this actuators and you can see that pneumatic brakes that is one of the application for that pneumatic brakes what will happen it will convert the small pressure change applied to the uh, drives the massive uh, required for stopping the entire process so what uh, what will happen if a small pressure is applied the entire uh, system stops there so that can be used as a pneumatic braking system. This uh, actuators are responsible for converting pressure into force. So what what they are actually applying? They are applying a small pressure, and uh, that pressure is converted into a force, and the entire uh, vehicle stops there. Is it not? That is the one of the braking system. What it is maintained. The power sources of pneumatic does not need any uh, need to store or reserve uh, for its operation. So this is uh, usually used in uh, braking process and all. And a small pressure can give a huge force, and it can indirectly stop the entire function. See, or you see when the bus is moving or anything is moving very fast. It is so much of pressure is. Uh, in situ, you have you are applying a small pressure, but the so much of force is required to stop it. And so that much force it has to generate. So then only the entire uh, body will use or the entire uh, vehicle will stop. So that is really important. So this is one more uh, actuator. What is the 
So this is completed, we will move on to the next one. So we'll go for the next one. So what is electric actuators? So you can see some of the figures here. DC motor, stepper motor, then uh, DC motor uh, relay, then uh, solenoid based uh, flow valve, all those things are some of the examples of electric actuators. So, what these electric motors uh, are used to power the electric actuators by generating the mechanical torque. So, you can see the stepper motor. Have you seen the stepper motor? Yes, sir. I have seen the stepper motor. So, you, have, you can see that those all those all those things comes under this. Electric actuators, which the generated torque is translated into a motion, and the motor shaft uh, or the switching process takes place. Example is the solenoid valves controls the flow of water and uh, the response of electric signals. And the classes of actuators, you can say that it is very much cheap. This is where uh, you can uh, buy it at very low cost. Then uh, there are speedy actuators uh, types are available. So some of the commonly used electrical actuators are available here in figure. You can say that DC motor, stepper motor, then uh, relay, then uh, solenoid based uh, flow valve. All these are some of the examples of electrical actuators. So why do you need the couple models, uh, DC models and all the things will be used? See, you have your designing a robot and you want to move the robot front and back and all those things. You need to use the step model and all those things. The step model will decide that rotate clockwise, rotate anti-clockwise, rotate uh, however you feel uh, you can uh, change the movement. So these are all uh, examples of electric actuators. Still another uh, four are there now. And we will do it in the next part. So we will stop it for today here. So we have seen uh, what are the three? What are the three we have seen today? What are the things we have to see tomorrow? So, those uh, three, another four we will be seeing that is thermal or magnetic actuators, then the mechanical actuators, soft actuators, and shape memory problem. Polymers. So we stop it today here.